Hey guys, welcome to another episode of La Verdad Sin Filtro. Today it's an honor and privilege to have GM Ministries yeah, with us. Man. I don't know about you, Fadal, but I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> God is going to do great man, things today, man. man. I'm happy. I'm we're happy. excited, we're excited. So, so JM Ministry, what does JM stand for? Just, just, so just you, you, go? Go? Give you us, go, you give tell us. Uh, so, so what JM stands for is uh, Jesus Movement. Okay. Plain and simple, you know awesome. what I mean? Um, back in the day, many people have asked us, and uh, those of you who've been following us for a long time, you know, Fidel, Anthony, you guys know uh, my wife before was uh, JM, which is what Jennifer Martinez. Mm-hmm. But um, as actually we were talking before, before even the podcast started, uh, how God used, uh, uh, many of you guys know, Jesus culture to kind of like... Um, confirm the change. Kind of confirm the, you know, the change from... Uh, Jennifer Martinez to Jesus movement, which is uh, kind of signifies that it's not only her, but it's kind of a, yeah. a union together. And it's not only that, yeah. uh, because you guys got married too. So yeah, it's not yeah, Jennifer so Martinez. Her. No, yeah, it's so, Jennifer yeah, Rodriguez. It's Jennifer Rodriguez now. <laughs> yeah. So and also like the conversation also confirmed that what God is using us is the spark and spread of movement. Awesome, and amen. Yeah, awesome. Mm-hmm. And it was it was incredible. Like I'm I'm really glad we changed it. Thank God. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, amen. Amen. A few months ago, a few weeks ago, you guys. Came out with a new CD. Yes, yes. yes. Broken please, Worship please Unleash. Talk about, please talk about uh, that. Broken Worship Unleash was released November 29th, mm-hmm. 2019, last year. Wow, wow. we're writing in 2020. Can you believe that? <sighs> That's crazy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, we're just ex- we're we're just so excited because um uh, many of you guys know. We actually recorded the album, believe it or not, I don't know if you guys even know, 2018, yeah, live. live. Well, actually, I think one of you guys, yeah. I, I, Jennifer, yeah. you, you sang that in his anniversary, yeah. one of the songs. Yeah. One yes, of the songs. yes. One of the yes. songs. Yes. 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 So, so yes. We, we have one, we, we have it, and it was great. Yeah, it was great. yeah so it, it actually came out, well, I mean, we actually recorded it in 2018, mm-hmm. and then, you know, just... You know, the devil just, oh, man. I mean, so much obstacles, obstacles, so much, right, babe? Yeah, and it was a lot of teachable moments because when you're recording yes. live, there's, we didn't, we, I guess I can say I was naive to to think that, you know, oh, yeah, we could record it and then, That's yeah, it. we no, could come on it's it be is. great. No, it's, it's a process. Like, it really is. It really editing is. to mm-hmm. mastering to, because th- we wanted things to be with excellence because even the Bible, it says, Play a skillful noise, noise into the yes. like you have to put a With noise, but even yes. the noise got to be skillful. So it's true. Yes. So yes. it's true. like we, I'm like God, we really want to bring this as mm-hmm. professional because it's for you, God, and we want to make sure that Amen. everything is clear from the tones to the musical um, part of it, everything, the cover, everything. So, so, so what's yeah. the background uh, on the album? Like, what inspired you? What the songs? I I listened to all your songs. Amen. 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 He's your number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sigue peleando. Sigue sigue peleando. Es mi favorito. Yes, yes. Yo, we sang it his anniversary. Yes. And, um, what, what I want to know, Amen. Jennifer, yeah. what was what inspired you? Oh, that's, uh, that's a really good question. Psalms fifty two, man. Like I, I remember we, I was reading Psalms um fifty two, verse sixteen and seventeen, where it's where David was talking to God, and you, and that chapter in particular Amen. refers to the moment where David was um coveting. A woman taking, you mm-hmm. know, a bath, and he did some shady things just to have that mm-hmm, woman. Mm-hmm. And once he was put in, you know, he was put in the spot by God. And Amen. after that, he writes this this psalm where he has this epiphany where God, you're not looking for sacrifice, or else I would give it to you. What you're looking for, God, is a broken and contrite heart. Mm, a broken yes. and contrite heart, God, on, you will man. not despise. And for David to say that that he was king during a time in the Jewish community where sacrifices were essential in order to gain the grace of God and the forgiveness of God. Mm -hmm. And so for him to have that very prophetic revelation that, God, what you're looking for is a broken and contrite heart. You're looking for authenticity. You're looking for realness. You're looking for honesty without filter. You're looking for (laughs) us to live an unfiltered life so that you Mm -hmm. can make us whole. I was like, God, I want an album that talks about that. Because, you know, I grew up born and raised in church and all you see is fake people. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's the truth. All you see is fake people. Hey, yeah. That's it's, no filter there. That's, that's, that's no filter. It's, it's yeah. the truth. And, and I, I remember growing up in church, I used to live in the second floor of an, of the apartment building. The church was on the first floor. And I remember oh, breaking into the church with a Metro card because <laughs> I loved being there alone and with people. Amen. And I was like, God, I just wish that everybody was just real and honest and really talked about the problems that were going on. So when we did this album, we wanted to 
create a safe space for people to just pour themselves out to God, everything awesome. out to God without Amen. Yep. being mm-hmm. judged or mm-hmm. feeling ashamed or feeling that God's grace is limited. No, this album wants yeah. to... So, so Jennifer, l- l- let me get this straight. Let me yeah. get this, you know, correct. So, I mean, basically what you said was awesome. And it's good because people need to listen to this. Need to, they need to hear this. Yeah. So, we, we're, we're, no one is perfect. No. no. You know, Mm-mm. ministers fall, you know, they fail, yeah. you know, um, like us, you know, people that are following, they, we, we all fail. Yeah, all of us. So, I mean, and, and you brought David because mm-hmm. he repented. Yeah. Now, my question is, if, if a minister, somebody in a, in a high position, when they fall, do you think when they get back or when they come back, when they repent, you think the ministry is the same? <sighs> That's a, that's, a good, that's a good one. It's a good question only because God is forgiving, but people are not. You know what I mean? So unfortunately, we're in a culture right now where if somebody does fall into sin and they have a big ministry, it's mm-hmm. hard for them to come back up sometimes because people aren't forgiving. Because people they really aren't. Continue, no. to, yeah. continue to look at the person and label the person by the sin and forget what Scripture says about forgiveness and reconciliation. And... Mm-hmm. I feel like in the church, there's a lack of restorative justice within the church. Mm-hmm. Where how can we reintegrate people who fell and still believe in the ministry that God has given them? Awesome. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's, there's a, it, that's very difficult. Like there's, but then there's people I know that, you know, who, like John Gray, when he was going through his issues with, with his wife. And it was because he was so authentic. Because him and his wife chose to be out there, mm-hmm. authentic, mm-hmm. vulnerable. Like, yep, this is yep. what we're going through. This is what's going on in Israel Houghton. When he was being honest about his situation, with his past infidelities with his um, ex-wife. And to see that vulnerability, and that's what God used to help restore their their ministry and their image. And I feel like that's what, you know, that's so, what's the so best what, thing to do. What, um, what advice would you give, like, someone right now? Mm-hmm that they had that ministry, they had that time God was using them and they they just lost it and they don't know how to get back. They don't probably have friends to push them. Because of sin or just because they just... Just, just because. I, I either mean, or, whatever it was. But you see, that's the lie. Yeah. The lie is that you lost it because you sinned. Everybody sins. Mm-hmm. Every single mm-hmm. yeah, day. Yeah, you're right. And just because fornication is not bigger or smaller than mm-hmm. lying, than all the... We all sin and fall short for the glory of God yes. every single day. This is why Christ died for us. This is why he lived incarnate the years that he lived. This is why he resurrected, because he knows that we will never make it without him. So for us to believe the lie, I sinned, so we lost the ministry. No, God still called you no matter what. We mm-hmm. just have to trust him with all of our scars, so our mess, mm-hmm. everything. So it's really more like a... Uh, Thing that people label you, or you, yeah. oh, you can't oh, do yeah. anything. Yeah, it's not sure. because God doesn't want to use you, or God doesn't, yeah. God doesn't work with you, God doesn't talk to you. It's more you messed up, and yeah. people see that. So, hey, no, that guy messed up. You can't, yeah. you know. And I, it's just I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. And yeah. it's just changing the narrative instead of saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, how can I get up from this minute? How can I get my ministry back? How can you conquer the war within yourself mm-hmm. in that lie?" Yep, I was just about to say that. Yeah. Sometimes it's a is a mental war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A yeah. It is. The enemy mm-hmm. telling you, or oh, you can't, you can't get yeah. up. And you got those diaconos and those people like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, like, like, like I can't believe they did yeah. that. And then, yeah. and then, so and then, if you look, at, you look in the Bible, and they're like, they're just like the Pharisees. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hypocrites. Yeah. And, and, and then the, the diaconos, the leaders, yeah. they, they they chew the pastor who invited. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. Or they, but, but, but you know, this person there, we're just gonna. Mm-hmm. You have no idea how many times that's happened. I mean, to us. E- e- even <laughs> us being married, you know. So that, that's exactly where I want to go. I mean, you guys. Oh, are a blended family. Yeah. Yes. And right. you guys and you guys have a ministry. Now, you you probably heard all the criticism. Oh, oh my we got the world. every day. <laughs> and just and just for the people who don't know what blended oh. family is, that you know, you guys have kids from you know mm-hmm. other marriages, and Different you guys marriage. you know, yeah. so you you guys and you guys have an awesome ministry. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory yes. to God. One God. Of the best. God supports it yes. because yes. I mean, from I mean, everything you know, the souls that. Um, Amen. Mm-hmm. Are touched by by your song, by your preaching, because you, you preach. Yeah. And That's too. He's just shy about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then me, uh, amen, amen. I'm he's preaching now on the podcast. Come on. So before we got here, he's, he's a mm-hmm. silent so, storm. Yeah. How, how do you do with it? How how do you do with it? Because I mean, and it, and it doesn't even look like you guys go through it, but I, I know. Oh, we do. You, you know what I think it is, and this might sound corny, and what everyone says. I mean, we literally just put God in the center of everything. Yeah. I mean. Throughout the criticism, throughout mm-hmm. the financial, like, throughout everything. People putting us down. 
I mean, you know, me with my past, you know, the struggles I used to have as a musician, stuff a lot of musicians don't even talk about, you know, oh, yeah. me personally, you know, going around sleeping with women, you know, yes, mm-hmm. this guy, this is La Relasing, you know, me as a musician, well known to, especially playing drums, I think you remember, you know, Using, yeah, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) This is real marriage, guys. (laughs) But you know, um, a lot of people do not know the struggles us musicians have, you know. And when I say musicians, I even include singers because she, you know, she don't want to a lot of stuff as well. Being uh, a minister and you know, singer and worshiper going through her stuff or or with her ex marriage, it's like you know, when we when we first got together, I told her. This is me. This is all of me. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to be fake. You know, I mean, I'm not going to put a filter. This is me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Nemi I, has w- without filter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, and that was something I had, to, I had to give to God. I was like, God, I cannot be with someone. Or you know what? No, better yet. You cannot put me with someone and take me to the next level when, first of all, I'm not even being real with myself. I'm not even being real with you, and I'm not even being real with the person you have for Correct. me. Correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just something that you literally have to put, you know, like and going back to the beginning, put God in the center, man. Yeah, because what, if not. What do you say to those single people like me mm-hmm. that are waiting on the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> that are waiting on the Lord, like, you know, for God to give them that special mm-hmm. person, like during that waiting time or season, what, what do you advise them to do? Uh, well, my advice is, you know, first be real to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to know, you need to know who's going to be compatible with you. You know, people say, yeah, you know, you have to deal. No, God gave you the smarts to be with someone you, <laughs> you know you're going to yeah. be compatible with. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does sometimes, you know, because God told me he was going to put me with someone. I didn't know it was going to be her. A friend of mine, we've been friends with like 15 For- Twenty yeah. years or we so like that. We have videos of when we were ministering yeah. together before, wow. like, even before, and I passed relationships. It's just yeah. you know crazy. So there's no gossip. Nothing happened between <laughs> us. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know my advice is just be real to yourself, but be real, be real to God. If you tell God exactly what you want, I tell God, and this might sound funny, us as guys, I'm a mama's boy. I tell God, and she knows. I told I told her this all the time. I want someone just like my mom, the way my mom takes care of me. And you know what? Like, there's nothing like the way your mom takes care mm-hmm. of you. You know, she makes you a day now, whatever it is. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> so I told God, look, for real, I told God, God, bring me someone just like my mother. You, you, you know, know in the is? sense like, of the, the cariness. Like living in a digital age where like everybody is not living yeah. with a filter, like mm-hmm. social media, Instagram. Mm-hmm. You, don't, a, you don't know who's it's real or not. Yeah. 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 Like, you're right. You're like, wow, you, get, you get catfish yeah. all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. You get catfish even in church. In church. You invite yeah. a worshiper and they sound but like something else. You know? That's like, too <laughs> too because Wait a minute. The church, the church really lacks in preparing the youth about dating and the reality of dating and mm-hmm. how important that is. It's not, you know, because in order for you to and then they they're, they're just so quick to say esta persona es para ti yeah. ay santo no, 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 no. no that people said that about my ex and I and look where we are now you know what I mean yeah. so mm. it's so, so it's also discernment yeah. we, we need oh, to be all yeah. discernment yeah. also amen. being real amen. with yourself yes. about your needs because as people God created us to be one with with another person and being honest about those needs the spiritual needs the physical needs not being afraid mm-hmm. to say that and to yeah. be like god you know it is hard up in yeah. these streets looking at a hot girl like i'm yeah. playing and she give me the high <laughs> and the preachers preaching yeah. but then she look yeah. good right yeah. even be honest, honest with one another with god man. About that. i, I yeah. say one thing is like you know i tell people oh you have a whole bunch of friends i'm like no this is my best friend right Come here. Come on now. Yeah. A lot of relationships, you know, especially when it comes to guys yo my, i'm gonna tell my boy this i'm gonna tell my boy nah bro tell Tell your significant other, trust me. Our relationship is literally like no other. I've never been with anyone else. Not because she's my wife or my friend, but I've literally never been with anyone else like her. It's because, you know, the relationship we have. We tell each other every single thing. Mm-hmm. I know it might sound funny, especially those who are married. Especially, I don't feel that you're married. I'm not sure about you guys, but... No, you don't mean um, you know my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's also because, especially when you're ministering in church and it's a blended family, to go back to your to your question, it's... It's we decided to walk in this ministry as Amen. if it wasn't a problem, mm. as if it wasn't a cliche. You know what I mean? Like, how, how did you kids get settled? Older? How did they respond to yeah, it? How did they um, respond? Well, oh, wow. wow. They, it, the funny, the funny story. I'll never forget. It really is funny. I yeah. remember when he when he went to see me at a church 
and he surprised me. I didn't know he was coming to, to the church, and he came in, and of course, everybody knows this kid from the Bronx. Like, everybody knows him. <laughs> so all everybody is like, ah, that Mia's is here, and my kids were there, and I, I'm not gonna lie, I was very nervous, because I'm a, I'm a mom, and I'm very protective over my mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. And even when I was single post, post-divorce, and I was single, and I said, I was like, God, I'm not gonna introduce my kid to another to another man unless it's something serious. I'm mm-hmm. very protective, but you messed that up by surprising me. <laughs> <laughs> and it Surprise. was just, it was just natural. Like they, you know, my kids ran up to you. Yeah, and well, they hugged, did. and then you ran up to them oh, and you awesome. hugged mm-hmm. them, and I was just like. Oh, Confirmation. What am I gonna do with this? Yeah, we had a play date with the kids, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. literally, and I'm, and I'm not saying this because we're on the really? podcast, but literally, so it's like they do not call each other stepbrother, stepsister. There, yeah. it's like that's awesome. my brother, that's awesome. my sister. Yeah. That's awesome. It's the craziest thing. Yeah, we're there together like all the time. We went on vacation to Florida the, not too long ago, yeah. and it was like the best thing in the world. Yeah, and they and, yeah. and their personalities all like connect. I think that's what yeah. made it really mm-hmm. easier. And even for us as a marriage, for us it was very easy too because him and I went through very similar situations. Literally, yeah. Past relationships. Yep, we did. And when it comes to custody, when it comes to who has the kids when and everything else, the thankfully we both understand each other that way. Mm, so we're very supportive yeah. of each other because we get it. We know what that's like. Like, I don't get jealous when he has to speak to his mom in regards to his son to set up something. He doesn't get jealous with me when I have to meet with my father's dad to settle some things with mm-hmm, the kids and yep. everything. Because we both understand each other, and there's a, a honest conversation about about that, and it's just with the wisdom of God, you know. And, the and Jennifer, I, I know I know you you work as a counselor, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, the age group. Mm-hmm. Um, how can you advise? What what advice would you give, especially to parents? Mm-hmm. Um, with all the problems that you probably hear, I mean, <laughs> and you probably hear a lot. Yeah. Because you know one thing that us adults think is that our kids don't have problems. Mm-hmm. Oh. I remember when I was 12, 11, yeah. people, you know, growing up would say, what kind of problems do you have? You know, you don't pay bills. That Bills are not yeah. the only problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Totally you know? It was different it's, to it's, our 12-year-old, so, yeah. 13-year-old yeah. are yeah. going through almost the same thing that yeah. us yeah. adults yeah. go through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all yeah. that, yeah. yeah. That's one of you know, yeah. so yeah. Bu- bullying and, you know, and they, their sexuality, they're right now yes. curious, mm-hmm. yes. you know, and also, like, whatever their parents do, they're watching. Like, what advice would you give a Christian Christian parents. <laughs> oh as man! A therapist. When as as a therapist, yeah, because you are licensed. I feel no. I'm working on well, my working on your license. We're working, working on, on your license. Hallelujah. Um, I guess from my experience, it's just don't think that you know everything because you don't, right. and always consult God first and allow God to work with your inner child in the inside. Because I think, as, as and I say this for a couple of reasons. One, not only from a mental health perspective, but from a person of experience. I've been through physical abuse. I've been through abandonment. I've been wow. through sexual abuse. I've been through spiritual abuse a lot throughout my family. So that's the, the personal experiences I've had with growing up, up in a dysfunctional family. And then also, from a mental health perspective, understanding what that trauma does to somebody and I studied at NIAC, so thankfully it also teaches us how to integrate the Word of God into all that trauma and how God redeems us and works with us through through the trauma. So that's why I say as a parent, you have to first look within yourself and allow God reveal, to reveal to you inside of yourself what, what you're going through, especially now with my kids. My daughter is growing up to be a teenager, mm-hmm. and yeah. I constantly have to, when she talks to me and and. My adult self is like, child, get together. <laughs> but then it's like the Holy Spirit quickly reminds me, like, no, you, you went through that too. And, you know, uh, let, let me give you the words. And he, and he gives me the words yeah. to speak to her. And there's times when, when God uses her to reveal something in me as a child that I haven't gone over. Wow. And I have to stop myself and be like, babe, can you go to your room for five minutes? And I got to cry in the bathroom like, Holy Spirit, I went through this and I didn't realize that I need your healing. But heal me because I don't want to bring more toxicity into her mm-hmm. by not, you know, healing from what I've been through as a kid. So just all in a nutshell, like 
as a parent, we don't know it all. Take that burden off yeah, and true. allow I, God I, to guide you with with hear your kids room. out too. Yeah, and he a lot of yeah, to listen. Yeah, we don't listen. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's like oh, no, not only listen, but we don't have, we don't have time for it. We don't spend yeah. time with yeah, our kids. Right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to make time. You have to make yeah, time. that's something my wife and I wear. Even if you're ministry, even if you work, you know, if you're a workaholic, if you're a student, even then, always make time. And even from now, like just recently, I made a dramatic change for my job. I used to make as I was a school counselor for three years. I made like sixty five k. In, in the charter school I worked at. Even and more, I, I think, yeah, yeah, and I sacrificed that mm-hmm. because there were so many things that my kids were going through that as a mom, I'm like, I have to be there for my kids. And now I'm settling for like a, a part time as a therapist, which I love. It's I still get my hours. It's still helping me out with, with my end goal of being licensed. But it was a big cut. Like it was a big <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah, and that's but all for the kids. But I don't Literally. regret it because it's the time that they needed for me as a mom to help them to instruct them to love them and to be there for them and and god's grace has been all over that Amen. providing so i don't Amen. you know it's Amen. it's essential to be there Amen. for your kids very essential so very like essential. acknowledge them acknowledge their gifts you know if you're especially if you're full time ministry, you have to take out time to be with your kids. Yeah, yeah. You can't just be ministry, ministry, ministry mm-hmm. all the time. You have to show them yeah. God's love through the fellowship with the family. Yeah, we, we purposely. So, so, so the advice was mm-hmm. for um, parent relationship with their kids. Mm-hmm. Now, um, what would you recommend as a female, a lady, the, the feminine perspective? Mm-hmm. If you're in a toxic relationship, mm-hmm. I mean. How, how do you go through that? I mean, being be, first, this this as a Christian because this is a Christian based mm-hmm. podcast. A Christian female, a wife, mm-hmm. in a toxic, even a, a girlfriend. You know? Yeah, you're I right. Know, you're right. I'm gonna tell you something. Can you? Can, in other words, can you make it that? Can you make that relationship healthier? I'm gonna tell you. Here's the thing. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say no. And I remember I'll speak from my own experience when I with my um, a marriage before. And it was like, if you read it in the story, it was like almost perfect. 14 years old, my the husband that I have now, Nemi, he's the second man I've ever been with. You know, I was that kind of a girl. I was that kind of a raja tabla girl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> very straightforward, very like, nope, I don't want a lot of guys. So it was my ex-husband, met him at 14. I got married when I was 18, thought everything was perfect mm. and great pastor's kid. Everything was great. Everything was wonderful. Until you start noticing, oh, you can't have friends these friends anymore wow, wow oh you i'm throwing out your your jean um skirts and your jean pants without your consent because they're too tight and they're too um they, they wow. show too much or i'm um, two seconds before ministering in another event oh you can't go minister because you have to be here with me that kind of stuff was happening to wow. me wow. but because <laughs> yeah. in the church Deep. taught yeah. me Deep. how to be devoted to a man I had to succumb to the emotional abuse I had to succumb to because I thought I was pleasing God in doing that. When in the when I remember, and even then he still found somebody else to to be with. Even then, me being faithful, me talking the way he wanted me to talk, walking the way he wanted me to talk, Mm -hmm. being the way he wanted me to be, cooking, looking the way out, you know, it, it, and you know he still found desire in, in in someone else. And I remember going through that. And it was very difficult. And I remember reading a book, because I'm, I'm such a bookworm, and it's a book by Timothy Keller called The Meaning of Marriage. And he wrote that with his wife. And that book brought me so much conviction because it showed me that the marriage that I had wasn't a godly marriage. The relationship I had wasn't a godly relationship. Because in the end, I was putting my ex-husband, my husband at the time, in a pedestal where God should have been. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And deep. I said to myself, mm-hmm. and in the book of yeah. Ephesians, there, there, there's a, and he uses... Um, I believe it was Paul or Peter's. I have to go back to, to, to the book. He uses those letters to specifically talk about a verse that says, you know, wives, submit to your husbands. And, the, and that was, he started with that. But then there's a part that says, but let's say the man is not Christian and he wants to leave, let him go. Let him go. But then it also says, but the man needs to love the woman the way Christ loves the church. Mm. So there is a reciprocal accountability that, yes, I need to submit to you, but is your covering a godly covering? And is that covering going to give me the opportunity yep. to put God in a pedestal and not you? So it's it's figuring that out and also saying and, and having a conclusion like, God, this marriage is not a godly marriage. What do you want me to do? In my personal situation, God told me to let go. Oh, that was so hard because I didn't want to until I found out everything that happened with him being with somebody else and everything else. And I said, and, and there was times when even when we were separated working on the divorce, and he was like, I want you back. 
you know, let's try to work things out, this and this and that. I want to work things out. And I remember very clearly God holding me from behind. I heard his breath. It's like I felt his breath in my ear ever so clearly telling me I'm going to give you the strength to say no because this is not this is not where I wanted wow. you to be. And I was, you know, it's it's having the strength to say no, but also allowing God to guide you if he wants you to stay. Wow. But also not tolerating abuse. You as a woman and I, and as a man too, because there's men who go through this too with women. Oh yeah. You you cannot tolerate abuse. That that's a no no. You know what I mean? So. I feel so, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it also has to do a lot with not being able to hear the voice of God. Yeah. Amen. Yes. There's, you're right. There's a lot of people that they're in marriages and then they tell God, God, look what you did. Mm -hmm. They never, they never yeah. consulted with. And, him and the then there's a lot of people that they just listen to their leaders. And and you yeah. know what? I, and I know I'm going to get criticized <laughs> for me saying this. <laughs> Come on. But there's a Come lot on. of leaders that are giving bad advice. Yep. A, lot oh, a lot of pastors a giving lot. a lot of bad advice. Lots, you lot of you know, because, because, as well. because there's a lot of pastors that they think a, a class in pastoral counseling is enough to counsel people. And it's mm -hmm. not. And, and, and they say because we don't believe in divorce. But yet, if someone's, you know, a, 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 a dama yeah. being abused, you know, and it's, yeah. and and the and the, the husband is about to kill him, yeah. no, because we don't believe in divorce. Yeah. No, you know, we recommend you to get out of that Can I tell you, relationship. We, we've had we've even had a conversation uh, not too long ago with uh, with uh, a specific someone telling us that exact same thing, and in me, I was so angry because you yeah, see I the remember. result oh, of gosh. such ignorant advice. Mm -hmm. it's ignorant, and God will hold those people accountable for such ignorant advice because. You have to understand the twofold. Yes, God, you know, there's a difference. Oh, you have to forgive and forget. But forgiveness and reconciliation biblically are two different things. You know, like mm -hmm. even with me and my, and my ex-husband, do I forgive him for being um, unfaithful to me? Do I forgive him for, for suppressing me in such a way? Of course I do. Is forgiveness a journey? Every single day I'm forgiving yes. that man. <laughs> Every single day yeah. I'm submitting my anger and my frustration and my bitterness <laughs> oh, yeah. about that situation yeah. to God every single day. But does it mean that, you know, we're going to be husband and wife? No. And that's okay. And I remember we were at an event and God put in my heart to testify about my divorce. And I oh, remember yes, getting yes. a letter of a woman. Yeah. And she gave it to mm -hmm. me, like, shaking. And I was, she was like, just read it afterwards when everything is done. And I remember, I remember reading it. And I think I still have the letter. Mm -hmm. And I cried because she said, I have never heard a woman go up and so boldly talk about divorce. Yeah, because said, I thought you. there was no hope for me and my ministry. Wow. You, and you know why? Because it's yeah. a taboo in yeah. the church. Oh, very yeah. We cannot yeah. speak about divorce. Mm -hmm. But yet a, it's, it's, it's in a lot of people. And a lot of you know statistically 50% of, of the nation of the, go through divorce. Yeah. Do you know January has been dubbed the, the month of divorce? The month of divorce you now. Know, yeah, it's, it's a new thing now. To, it's yeah. something I think that we have to talk about. The Christians have the most. Yeah, the yeah. Like right? percentage is, yeah. Yeah. is even higher. Because again, there's a mm -hmm. lack of insight with dating. There's a lack of insight of teaching. Yeah. About lack of education. Yeah. education. The youth about, yeah. take the youth and tell them, you know, just being transparent yeah. about yeah. the youth. Be trans hey, and, and I really believe that with the pastors, if you, it, pastors that are listening, please get someone who's educated, who's yes. licensed. Yes. You know, don't yes. get don't get anyone. No, no, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they could speak two or three tongues, they think. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get someone who has a sermon and who yes. has a connection, direct yeah. connection with God. And man, also, you know? but, and also yeah. a class in pastoral counseling is a class in pastoral <laughs> counseling is not enough. It's not enough because it's just so, I mean, think about it. Even for me to be a therapist, I have to go through uh, two or three years of grad school. Mm -hmm. And then I have to complete two, I believe, 2,000, 3,000 yeah. hours post-grad um, to be a licensed therapist. And then take an exam to wow. be a licensed um, therapist. That, that's how and and you, and you know what? It's pretty, is. and it's really good that now and they, the, the states are actually requiring yeah. because it could be a lawsuit. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yep. You, you, you could get arrested, yeah, you know. Yeah, you to. I'm kind of, you know, and, and we have to get, like, so we got to get educated. Yeah, and don't be, and don't go, you know, all these false prophets and false prophets, don't, <laughs> like, don't, uh, the God, I got some, your man is coming. Da -da -da. No, first fall in love with yourself. First. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love Amen. yourself Amen. with God yes. first. Know who Amen. you are, because I left that marriage, my, my previous marriage, not knowing myself. You know what it is to be with somebody for more than half of your life and leave that marriage with your identity gone? Uh -huh. I didn't know who I was. Yeah. I remember I remember going to therapy post my divorce and the therapist telling me, okay, so what are some things that you like to do? What Some hobbies you have? And I couldn't. Oh, well, I remember me and my husband at the time, me and my husband, we used to do this. He's like, no, 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 no. What do you like to do? I'm like, well, 
I didn't understand the question, so of course wow. I'm like, no, but me and my husband, mm-hmm. we used to play basketball, we used to do this, I used to play handball. He was like, no, 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 no. What do you like? And I had to sit there and I bawled. <laughs> wow. And I cried because as women, we constantly give and pour mm-hmm. and pour you know your to identity. help all the men be as yeah. good looking and great as they are. We pour, we pour, and then we lose ourselves. Wow. And that's and, and it's mm-hmm. again is like that lack of education of trying to empower you know, women to be what are what So there's, there's a few groups, right, that we have to, you know, I think the pastor should educate themselves. Like yeah, for sure. The single. Oh, yeah. The single people. Mm-hmm. The married people. Mm-hmm. Then they got the widows. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. please pay attention and give time to the divorcees. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, now, what would you give in an advice for people? Because we have a lot, you know, divorce 50%. Yeah. People that, are, that were ministers, or are called, but they don't want to keep on going because of that, that label that they're divorced. Mm-hmm. Is there a chance for them to get? Oh, of course, yeah. And we, and, and, and I we know, know that, that's that's what I, I mean. We know, <laughs> you know. And this is speaking from personal experience. My wife and I, we know a lot of people. But besides people, you know, I'm talking from my personal experience. I was labeled as one thing. You know what I mean? Oh, tú eres mujeriego. Tú eres solamente un músico. That's all you're good for. Mm-hmm. You're not good for anything else. You know what I mean? And that's one thing, especially in church. We're always church, you know, church wants to label you as something. Yeah. In church, you always label as one thing or another. With me, tú eres solamente el músico. You're, only, you're the pastor's son. You're only good for this. You're good for that. You know, all eyes are watching you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what I thought. Or oh, it's good that she left you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what's the harshest thing that you've heard said to yourself? Oh, like, no, to you, I, I should say. Trans- to me personally, yeah, transpose. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you never transpose. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you know what I have to do. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's a musician joke, guys. If you don't know, <laughs> look it up. But, um, look it up. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> No, but but the um, harshest, like the like the like like it actually almost or made probably even made you cry. Like yeah, I mean to be honest, you know people label label me as something I wasn't, and that's something. It's like what I told you guys earlier. I literally had to give up first to God and tell her that look, you know, and it was it was just so much that I thought I was that person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was to the point that she thought I was that person. Yep. She used to see me in cultos in church before we were even talking. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to sing with that dude playing piano. I, I used to tell Literally. Him. I used you know to I mean? tell like, him. Whoa, wait. Funny story. When we were going and I had to minister and he was there, I was like, I don't want you playing. Yeah. No, for <laughs> real. And I, oh, no sh- joke. And I would have some whack like, guy <laughs> with the transport. <laughs> 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 I don't want you to play nothing. I don't want you to play nothing, bro. I'm good. Yeah, you know, so I think what me personally was... You know, people labeling me as something that, you know, that God didn't call me to be. Yeah. And that that just got me. And, and broken, I think also man. it's not really what they say, it's who says it to you. Yeah, and that's And I thing. found yeah. out that the pers- the people more closest to you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are right. the ones that like, say right. the most yeah, harshest you, you things. Right. You know what yeah. it is also like, I, I feel like if you're going into ministry and you worry about labels and like judgment, yeah. I think you shouldn't go into ministry. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that's all you're going to be receiving. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the only way this actually worked out is if, you know, we, you know, like what she said, she asked God to give her the strength to forgive her ex-husband. Yeah. I ask God every day, you know, to, to forgive me for my ex-wife as well. But also phase. forgive me the strength. Yeah. You know, to not believe what people say I am, you mm-hmm. know, because yeah. God didn't call me to be that. Mm-hmm. He, he called me to be the person he called me to be, which go. is a minister of God, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just, and, you know, and, we're re- and we're really grateful that you guys, first of all, you guys came in. Yep. Uh, we, Amen. We, Amen. We're so grateful that, you know, God united you guys. You guys, Amen. your ministry is yeah. awesome. Amen. Glory to God. Glory we to God. have some ministry questions. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, we're down. Okay. Amen. Now, <laughs> payment. Everybody, like, what? what do you guys have to say about that? You, you want, you want Chase? You want Quick Pay? <laughs> yeah. How, how, how do you, how do you guys still accept chat? Do you, so like, how do you think, yes, as a ministry, you know, uh, <laughs> ministry, why do you guys do worship? You guys sing? Uh, um, you play? Well, per- how, how does it work? I mean, what, what's you know, sh- should should a musician get paid? Sh- shouldn't you know? S- simple question. Um, I'm, and I'm going to be frankly honest. And this is from my personal opinion. Yes, due to the fact one. It literally says it. I, mean, I forgot what verse. It just slipped my mind. But it literally says it in the scripture. Bible, in scripture. Yeah, scripture. It says it. Honor. You know, you honor those who serve. Yep. 
You know what I mean? So God, Jesus was the first one. People will even know this in the Bible. Check in the Bible says it. God used to bless his disciples. He used to pay them. Yeah. He told them to leave their jobs and yeah. work for him so that way he can bless them and take care of his family. I think, you know what I mean? Disciples, when his disciples was a treasure. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know, but also, the, you know, the other side to it is like, you don't do it for the money. That's no. where things get mm-hmm. messed yes. up. Yes. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the, line. That's the that's, line. That's the, that's the line. Can you, you, can you repeat it, that again? Can you repeat you that again? You don't do it for the for money. The money. However, you know what I mean? Yeah. However, you know, it's like my wife and I, what we tell our team all the time, guys, this is not for a show. We're not here for money. Mm-hmm. We're, for, we're here for the souls. Yeah, yeah. man. So you know what I, mean? I have a follow-up question. Let's yeah. say someone invites you, and they mm-hmm. say, hey, look, we can't give you big, you know, maybe we can pay for your gas to get there. Mm-hmm. Would you say yes, or would you say oh, no? Oh, we've done it, yeah. We've done it yeah. before, too. All but the time, also, yep. what, what people need to take into account is that full-time ministry is full-time ministry. Mm-hmm. In order for me to get to your church, I need money to pay the gas and the yep. toll. In order for me to pay food for my children to eat. We yep. even have energy. In order for me to get <laughs> no, the equipment, yeah, yeah. when it comes, you saw, you saw the, the, and the equipment that we even brought to be in this podcast is not even all the equipment that we have to get. <laughs> yeah. Like they do, what we hear in the video, we want it in our service. I'm like, okay, so yeah. you want the sound guy, you want the videographer, you want the bassist, <laughs> you want the drummer, you want the, yep. and Literally, we yeah. are fruit of what, get, when you sow a seed, people don't understand, it's not just a monetary exchange. Mm-hmm. I am investing Amen. in you. Yep. Yep. Meaning in that ministry, if correct. I pay mm-hmm. you, this money is a representation of me believing in you, affirming your ministry as a mm-hmm. sister and brother in Christ that we are, yep. and say, use this money as a way of enlarging and expanding your Amen. territory. Amen. Amen. And people could, I'm telling you, Anybody who's worked with our ministry, and I'm going to say this boldly and with the confidence of God, there has been growth. Amen. Like you, yep. you could look at a ministry and be like, oh, a ministry is great. But a ministry is great when you see that the people around them are also growing. Mm-hmm. You know, so it and Amen. we've and there's times when we've given out of our pockets to pay musicians and we didn't have money when we came home. At all. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Or Does that affect t- us? No. No, but there's no, there's a blessing amen. when when you do give because it costs money, guys, to pay for that bass, to pay for mm-hmm. that guitar. To, mm-hmm. to, Instruments to, aren't cheap. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and it's also yeah. believing. In, amen. I believe in your ministry. Mm-hmm. I believe in, in in what you have. You know what I mean? So I feel like giving honor to what honors do to amen. musicians. Yeah. Has, has an, like any church important. paid you with pastelitos? That's what yes. I want to know. There's oh, yeah. There's churches mm. that didn't pay us with anything. I remember yeah. we went to one service. We went to Boston. <laughs> yeah, we went to Boston. <laughs> what, what church was In the this? beginning. I don't remember. <laughs> no, 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 no. We went to Boston. No, we went to Boston. They couldn't even give us pastelitos. Yeah. We left empty-handed. Oh, they, they, they had the reasons one? The, yeah. what the reason one? Yeah, the reason one. <laughs> you know what's funny? We came from that service, those. and we came from that from empty that place, hand. not only empty-handed, but barely enough money to pay gas for, for our gas music. to wow. go back. Yeah, and for to feed our children. My son telling me, "Papi, I'm hungry," and, and I'm like, "I don't food. have money." But then in faith, we went to the McDonald's. We literally, like and five dollars. We like, "God, you're gonna you're gonna multiply the fishes and the bread, God, and the, <laughs> yeah. the do nuggets." It. And, and, the guy, and the guy was like, "Yo, I'm closing my last shift. I'm closing the store. The store. You can have whatever you want. It's on me." Oh my god! Literally, wow. we're crying. We're literally crying. That's, you know, crying crazy. because our children mm-hmm. were legit hungry. You know yeah. what I mean? And this is the part of ministry that other people, other churches, don't understand. And I hate it when they look at us like, "Oh, so you need this much? But why?" I'm like, yeah, because when we divide it to pay the drummer, to pay the bassist, to pay the videographer, to pay the sound guy, to pay the whatever, and when we end up with just $2, like, that that's why. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think just, people want excellence. Just, yeah. Um, just to yeah. leave you with a handshake. People want yeah. the best quality, and then they don't want to pay for it. Yeah. You know? yeah you, they expect right. it for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then being it's, honest with that, because there's churches who told us they couldn't. And, and, we, we, and, we, and we're right. all about honesty, my yeah, wife and I, especially be honest me. With us. Be honest with me, you know, because I'm I'm the coordinator of the ministry. Mm-hmm. You're honest. We've flown to, you know, for the glory of God, yeah. we've flown to different states with the whole band, yeah. even our sound guy and our media guy. Yeah. And some of them, they were like, yo, we only could pay your flights. We can't give you anything else. I'm like, no problem. Now I know, me and my we wife. Budget. Now, and then there's, you know, and then there's like, times no where problem. we would say no because we couldn't afford to. to or even that, yeah. But it's not because that. you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know that I, I ask musicians, hey, can you help me it. out? Like, well, yeah, but if you can't give me nothing, I can't go. And it's just like, 
That's the wrong because attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But it's not because yeah. you can't afford it. Just because I don't want to take that for even if I'm picking you up and I'm yeah. doing everything for you. You know. Yeah, because it's, it's true. Hard. So guys, we're really happy. Uh, we can't wait to hear you guys. You I guys know. are gonna play. You guys are gonna <laughs> yeah. worship. We're you guys excited. are gonna sing um, from your from um, album. album. Yes. So yep. we're Amen. really, really. Um, in, in, in for a, a great treat. Amen. Amen. Uh, yes. Thank you for having us. No, thank, thank you guys thank so you much. For, for, for staying. Yes, thank you for having us. And we're, we can't wait.